Hey there, gamers! Uh, it's gonna be uh, my first ever Dreamcast game review. And as I said, these are gonna be in 4x3 now, so you're gonna be able to see the screen really nicely. There's a reason for this little Megalex here on the bottom right. That's because this is actually an unreleased game for the Sega Dreamcast. This is Propeller Arena Aviation Battle Championship. Now, pretty much the basic idea, basic history of what happened with Propeller Arena is this. Uh, about in the early 2001 or so, in like the last real, you know, productive year of the Dreamcast, you know, when a lot, when like more than just two, one title came out, one or two titles came out, they, Sega made Alien Front Online. Okay, volume's good. Developed by and Alien Front Online actually allowed for voice chat over a 56k modem, you know, it was 1% at a time, but pretty much what happened, and yeah, here's Sega at what would have been the online, Propeller but pretty much what happened was Sega AM2 ended up making yeah. like a spiritual successor in a sense, Propeller Arena. What happened though, it was all set to be released, it was fully developed from what I can tell, about two weeks before it was released, in sep late September of 2001, the uh, unfortunate incident involving the World Trade Center happened, you know, 9-11, and well, Sega had here a video game which is all about dog fighting, and including a stage that was modeled very much after New York with buildings and stuff. Sega just felt it was not right to release a game like this, you know, so soon after 9-11, and it was, no, it was fully finished, it, they had to cancel it, so... Propeller Arena never got an actual release. It, not like it would have really kept the Dreamcast alive for much longer, I'd say, but it's still a shame to just see a game cancel when it's fully released. Uh, a few years later, though, somehow someone got a hold of, like, the actual ROM or the image of this game, and uh, now it's available for download. If your Dreamcast can play burn games, um, burn discs, you can play it. You know, I don't really support, you know, the burning of games, but in this case, this is the only way you can play it. Sega has not indicate any real indication of uh, releasing this game again, so I just wanted to show it off. So that was the opening. One of the things, so here we go, championship, quick battle, training arena, network, and options. Let's go into the network really fast. See, if this actually was released, you'd be able to do network, so we can't do anything like that. You can do a handle name, you know, go to the home page. This one was going to support the broadband adapter, the only occasionally used broadband adapter. It was going to use it. So that if this game was released, it would have been the first, to my knowledge, the first ever vi uh, console-based video game to support voice chat over a broadband connection. Alien Front Online was the first to do voice chat on a console, but that was over 56K. Just one thing I want to show off really fast, the audio. One of the things about this is, remember how like in Crazy Taxi they had like Offspring and Bad Religion? And this one... Uh, Fat Rec record, Fat Rec chords teamed up with Sega. So you have groups like Consumed, Zero Down, No Use for a Name, Mad Caddies, Rise Against. I think Rise Against is the only group that I've actually heard of. And then you have a bunch of songs that AM2 themselves developed. I think it was about like two thirds was AM2, one third was Fat Rec chords. So that was another thing. You're gonna use a lot of like you know music like this. So we're just gonna go into a quick battle. Actually, I'm gonna raise the volume just a little bit. There we go. Nice thing is that Alien Front Online was only one player on, well, no, two players, I believe. On, no, it was actually one player on one console. This one allowed four players, which is really cool. So we're just going to get in. So you got all these different planes. You got Eagle Jam, The Shameless Cats, Muscle Brothers, Pizza Fat, Pengo Gents, Jets, 8-Bit Beat, Hex Candy, and Golden Knife. I'm going to choose Eagle Jam. Pretty much the big, you know, USA-style group. So you got Airport, you got Red Valley, Tower City, which is pretty much the stage that canceled the game. Sky High, which is just Sky. Ice World, Volcano, Old Castle, Phantom Island. Well, let's check out Tower City first. Now, pretty much this is just, you know, it's dogfighting. It's just pretty much, in a sense, a bunch of death matches. But, you know, if it pretty much, it says, you know, harmless as possible. Like, in Tower City, you have all these buildings, but they are safe as hell. Anyway, base controls. R, the right trigger lets you accelerate, left trigger lets you decelerate. A is your fire. B, if, you know, B, you know, was going to be your talk button. You will hold that down so you can talk. So now, see, I got a pickup that I, I don't fully remember what all the pickups do, unfortunately, right now. So I can go over here. I'm going to follow him once again. Ah, see, someone froze my controls now. See, so you have all these little power-ups. You have, you know, weapon power-ups. You have uh, control power-ups. Now, one thing you have 
you see on the top are all your enemies' health. On the bottom, you see my point score, power, speed, damage, and time. That is, the speed is my speed, damage is how much health I have. Power actually has something to do with tricks. So, like, I'll do quarter circle right and X. And you see now I do like this quick 90 degree turn. Okay, how about if I do half circle and XE, I turn around. Like I'll do half circle, down to up, I'll do a 180 turn. Everything takes away from your power, but it's pretty much made to help you like, you know, get to an enemy much faster. Now let me try actually taking someone out. So I'm gonna go after uh, this character here. See, once you see those circles, that means you can actually hit them because you're close enough. You See, so, yeah, it lasts for very, it's very arcade, like, you know, it don't have to be exactly on the mark, as long as they're within that circle, you can hit them. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like controlling a plane, so it may take a little used to it if you're not used to it, but it's actually very easy to um, control, so that's nice. See, so, yeah, I push X, and now I'm in this chase mode, once it tells me to, and I can pretty much chase him down until he's defeated. Now, see, what happens is when you die, you're always parachuting out, you always eject, no one actually dies. You know, you can crash into these buildings. The buildings will not get destroyed one bit. There's no environmental damage. It's very arcade-like. But, you know, Sega just did not want to risk the idea of people being sick, you know, being sick and just running planes into the buildings. You can also do it. Ah, so now my controls have been reversed. Oh, there we go. You also do a crash into each other where you both, you know, of course, eject, and I think both of you get a, a kill for that. And every time you die, you do have to wait a few seconds before you can come back into battle. And it's pretty much, you know, deathmatch style in a sense. Whoever has the high score, whoever, I believe it's either whoever reaches 10 points first or whoever has the highest score after time runs out wins. Now, I'm playing on normal difficulty. They're not exactly, they're like slightly challenging, but not too much. Like, if you, if you really know what you're doing, you can easily win nothing on normal. But it's really, it's a simple game, but it's fun. I mean, the championship pretty much puts you through all the stages, and, you know, it's very much, it never was released in arcades, but it pretty much is obviously an arcade-style game. So now I'm going to get turned this. See, now I can easily see them. Ah, uh, now we got a hot potato. So this is pretty much now, it's a hot potato. So if I get close to an enemy, it'll tell me to push Y, and I can push Y to uh, send the hot potato towards him. So you now I send it towards him. Whoever... You know, and pretty much whoever has the hot potato one time runs out, they blow up, they have to come back, and the person who sent the hot potato out gets pretty much an, a free kill. Gets a free point. Tower City is actually one of the cooler stages in this game, though, because of all the buildings. Okay, so now there's the hot potato power. Ah, oh, they went away. Yeah, so you gotta be fast. Yeah, see, obviously that very much is like the uh, World Trade Center. So I'm going to slow down, maybe do that a little bit, come back, uh, there he is. See, now I got someone chasing after me, though. Ah, see, now I got shot down. You see, there's my p pilot. See, now you have to wait a few seconds. So at first, you really want to make sure you don't, you know, you don't get shot down in this game. I just really wanted to show this game off. I mean, it's definitely a fun game. If this, really, if this actually was released for the Dreamcast, I think people would have definitely loved playing this online. It definitely probably would have been a nice little game to play online, especially since it supports the broadband adapter. Well, of course, in that case, it pretty much means at this point in time, you know, almost 10 years later, it wouldn't be online anymore, because I don't believe any of the Sega games allowed for private servers like uh, Quake 3 Arena does. That still actually is playable online with the Dreamcast and the broadband adapter, because it supports private servers. So there you go, I got another kill. I'm in first place now. So, you know, I'm just going to pause, I'm going to quit the game, and then we're going to check out one last stage really fast. And training arena is where you get to practice all your, like, you know, your stunts and everything. So, come on, let's hurry up. Choose Eagle Jam again. And, uh, we'll do Phantom Island. I would really love to see Sega try to, you know, release this on, like, Xbox Live Arcade, PlayStation Network... Or, you know, the, I think the best thing they would do was maybe release this alongside Alien Front Online on, like, as, like, an arcade collection. As, like, a collection, you know, that we can get it on all three consoles. PS3, 360, and Wii. You know, Sega's definitely uh, supporting a lot of their arcade releases. You have Afterburner Climax coming out on Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. Uh, there was a ESRB revealed New York, what was it? New York Gunblade and 
LA Machine Guns, I believe, is getting like a double pack collection on the Wii. You know, there's also, you know, Ghost Squad, House of the Dead 2 and The Return. There's a lot of arcade titles that Sega's been releasing recently, and I would just love to see this, and maybe, you know, this and Alien Front Online given another chance. I mean, Alien Front, Alien Front, you know, even without the online, still a pretty fun little arcade title, and uh, I think it would definitely be cool to try that online, especially with broadband, since it was never broadband supported. It was, you know, again, 56K modem only. See, as long as you're hitting within that circle, you're okay. So, very arcade style, very easy to pick up and play. But, you know, this is Propeller Arena. I mean, it can only be found via download because it was never released. Someone got a hold of it. It's a shame, though, you know, see, this never got released because it is a fun title. I mean, I understand fully why it got canceled. But it's a shame because it was fully released. They put a lot of money into it, especially with the music. But uh, it definitely was a fun game. So uh, if you have a chance to check it out, you know, definitely do. And uh, go to Sega's forums and request that they give it a re-release.